It was a quiet Tuesday afternoon when the call came. I was sitting on the couch, enjoying the soft hum of the house as I sipped my coffee, trying to focus on the book in my hands. Outside, the sky was overcast, a heavy gray that felt like a warning. My phone buzzed on the coffee table, its screen lighting up with an unknown number. At first, I thought about letting it go to voicemail. These days, who answers calls from numbers they don't recognize? But something in the back of my mind urged me to pick it up. Maybe it was instinct. Maybe it was the eerie feeling that today was going to be different. Hello? I said, trying to keep my voice steady. Anna? It's Christina, the voice on the other end said. My heart dropped. It had been years since I'd heard from her, my estranged sister, the one who always seemed to have it all, the one who never really understood the word family. Christina. I barely knew how to respond. Christina, what's going on? There was a pause on the other end. For a moment, I wondered if I had imagined the whole thing. Then she spoke again. Grandma passed away, she said, and I could hear the weight of the words even through the phone. I froze. My mind raced, processing what she had said. Grandma? The heart and soul of our family? Gone? I wanted to scream to ask how it could be true. But Christina's next words stopped me. I thought you'd want to know, she added, her voice sounding almost triumphant. Or was it just the cold tone that always sent chills down my spine? I closed my eyes for a second. Of course, she'd be the one to break the news. Thank you for telling me, I said, fighting to keep my voice calm. I'll make arrangements to come. Christina didn't respond right away. Instead, there was this long, drawn-out silence that felt heavy. Almost like she was waiting for something, waiting to see how much it bothered me, maybe. When she finally spoke, her words hit me like a punch. I'm sure your life is... modest. I'll take care of everything, she said, her tone sharp and dismissive. The words stung more than I wanted to admit. I swallowed the lump in my throat, telling myself that I wasn't going to let her get to me. Thanks again, I muttered then hung up the phone. As the line went dead, I sat there for a few moments, staring at the screen. I didn't know whether to feel relief or dread. Christina wasn't just cold. She was calculated. She'd always been that way. And the timing of this? I had a sinking feeling it was no coincidence. Growing up with Christina was like living in the shadow of a towering figure. She was everything I wasn't. Beautiful, charismatic, effortlessly confident. My parents always favored her, especially our father. It wasn't like I was neglected, but it was clear who had the spotlight. I was just there. I worked hard to prove myself, but no matter how much I tried, I always felt like I was falling short. But it wasn't just the attention she got from everyone around her. It was how she used it. I never understood how she could manipulate situations so easily. I never could. And that ability of hers? It ruined me. I had been engaged once to a man named Brian. He was kind, funny, someone I truly believed I would spend the rest of my life with. But all that changed when Christina, with her magnetic charm, decided she wanted him for herself. I still remember the night I found out. It was like my whole world shattered. She didn't even try to hide it. They were together, and I was left in pieces. When she betrayed me like that, I cut ties with her, and with the rest of my family. Our father didn't even try to pretend he wasn't on her side. My mother was supportive, but she never understood what it felt like to be constantly overshadowed. So, I built a new life. A quiet, simple one. I married Arthur, a man who was everything I had ever dreamed of. He worked in tech, quiet but steady. The kind of person who didn't need the spotlight. We built a home in the suburbs a cozy little house filled with love. And when Abigail came along, my world shifted again. She was the light of our lives. At five years old, she was already a little artist in the making. Her YouTube channel, full of drawings and her little creative adventures, had a small but loyal following. Our life wasn't perfect, but it was mine, and it was full of love. Yet, when I heard Christina's voice again, all those old feelings, those scars I thought I had healed, came rushing back. It wasn't just about the loss of our grandmother. 
It was about everything that came with it. The past, the lies, the betrayal. And I knew, deep down, this was far from over. The days leading up to the funeral were a blur. I spent most of my time trying to avoid thinking about it, focusing on work and Abigail. But no matter how much I tried to keep myself distracted, one thought kept creeping in. I was going back to the family home, the place where everything had started, where everything had gone wrong. The house hadn't changed much. It still looked the same, old, worn, and full of memories. The smell of cinnamon from grandma's baking, the sound of laughter and arguing filling the rooms, the familiar sense of comfort that was both warm and suffocating at the same time. I stood outside the house for a moment, taking it all in. I hadn't been back in years, and I wasn't sure if I was ready to face it. Or more accurately, face her. Christina. I stepped inside, and immediately, the air felt thick. It was like the house itself was holding its breath, filled with grief and unsaid words. Relatives and old family friends filled the rooms, some exchanging pleasantries, others standing quietly in the corner, eyes scanning, judging, waiting. And then, there she was, Christina, as poised and flawless as ever. She hadn't changed a bit. Her magnetic presence still commanded attention, and she seemed to glide through the crowd, effortlessly charming everyone she met. I tried to keep my distance, not sure what I'd even say to her after all these years. But Christina didn't give me the option. She found me. The ceremony had begun, and I was sitting in the back, trying to keep my emotions in check. The eulogies were heartfelt. People spoke of Grandma with tears in their eyes. But I couldn't stop glancing around, waiting for the inevitable. I knew Christina would approach me sooner or later. And sure enough, she did. Anna, she said, her smile as cold and perfect as I remembered. It's been a while. I forced a smile, though every part of me wanted to walk away. Yes, it has. How have you been? Oh, you know, she trailed off with a dismissive wave. Life's been interesting. I could hear the familiar venom in her words, the same subtle jabs that I'd spent years learning to ignore. But I wasn't going to let her have the satisfaction of seeing how much she still affected me. For a moment, we stood there in silence exchanging pleasantries, both of us knowing this wasn't about reconnecting. It was about something else, something deeper, something that had never been resolved. It wasn't just about grandma anymore. It was about us, the betrayals, the hurt, the years of silence that had built a wall between us. And I couldn't help but wonder, was this the moment? Was this the time to confront everything that had happened? The funeral ended and the house began to empty out. Relatives trickled out, exchanging last words, offering their condolences, but my mind was still stuck on Christina. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I found her again, standing by the window, staring out at the yard. There was no way to avoid her now. I had to talk to her. I had to get answers. Christina, I said, my voice low but firm. Can we talk? She turned slowly, that same polite, insincere smile playing on her lips. Of course. What's on your mind? I took a deep breath, trying to steady my nerves. This wasn't just about Grandma. This was about everything I had buried for so long. I need to understand, I said. Why did you have to take Brian from me? What made you think it was okay to destroy everything we had? Christina's expression hardened the smile fading just enough to reveal the coldness beneath. It's not about taking anything, she said sharply. Brian and I had a connection you just didn't see. Her words burned through me, but I wasn't backing down. You knew how much I loved him, I said, my voice rising. You knew what he meant to me. She shrugged, her indifference only making it worse. Life's messy, Anna. You can't always control who you love. My chest tightened as anger surged within me, but I wasn't going to let her win, not this time. 